So, we've got Grappling Industries this weekend. Who's competing? Cool. A few people. Um, so, they're doing overtime rounds, which are EBI rules, which means you get to, if no one gets a submission, you have to start from either the back or from the armbar. So, you get to start from either, either here like this or here like this. Okay? Um, you get your uh, offensive grips, they get their defensive grips, and then you get to go. So whether from here or from here. Okay? So let's, yesterday we worked armbar, today we'll work the back, tomorrow we'll go armbar, so we'll just uh, make sure we get a lot of practice with both. Um, we're going to work just the basic uh, choke attack from here, and then we'll work some defense. Um, but I want to just talk first of all about maintaining a good harness and control of your opponent, okay? So from here, what I want to do with my harness, which I think is the most important thing here, is I want to have my elbows tight and back like this. And I want to work my hands nice and high, up, like high under the armpit, and elbow towards the shoulder, almost coming back over the shoulder. You can pull it back over as well, that's fine too. But I want to be controlling John's rotation, okay? So if John tries to turn his shoulders left or right here, he should feel pretty stuck. If my hands are down here, he can turn a lot more. Yeah, I can lose some of the control. So I want to slowly walk my. Once you connect your hands, you're going to try and walk your arms back. You're going to put your head next to their head. Okay, because if we go on this side, John wants to get his head down towards the mat. All right. As soon as his head goes there, I can get my choke on, and it doesn't do anything. Okay. Because when I try and pull here, he can turn it towards me, and it's gone. Okay. Whereas if he goes that side and I've still got my head here, I've got a chance at pulling him across and, and attacking the neck. Okay, so that's why we want his head on on the same side as we've got the arm over the neck. All right, but we're actually going to work taking him to the other side because uh, this is generally uh, an easier way to get this choke. So I'm going to go tight with the harness, and I'm actually going to roll to my right side here like this. Okay, so. We're setting this up from the back, but it's actually going to be, so everyone come over here. We're setting this up from the back, but it's actually really almost going to be like a side mount, uh, S mount style uh, choke, okay? Because the problem here, if I get a good choke on, when I try to get leverage, if John just stays on his side like this, I can't retract my, and I can't retract my right leg, it's actually kind of hard to get enough leverage to pull on this arm. I want to remove my right leg, get up, bring it high, and then end up with that leg over the shoulder, okay? When the leg's over the shoulder, John tries to turn, and he can't, so I can really pull with my right hand to finish. So let's go over that. Nice and tight harness, make sure it's tight first, make sure the person can't turn left or right. From here, we're gonna go to the side. I'm gonna start to take my uh, right foot out from underneath. If you're struggling, you can't even take your left foot out because it's not actually extremely important at the moment. And you can lift just to, to get them off, okay? From here, I keep my chest pressure, I come up and I put my right knee behind the, the head. Now, because I took my left foot out, I'm gonna put it back in. If you kept it in the whole time, you can just keep it there. But this is not the, the difficult part of this move, okay? When we're here, I'm pulling my right elbow up on top of my leg, so it makes the harness nice and tight. You're not going to submit them here, but it should be, it should feel like you've got like a mini choke going on, okay? Let's just rotate this way a little bit. Okay? So we're here, once we're here, you're just going to take your left hand, turn the collar, feed it to your right hand, like this, and then you're going to lean, grab onto the far leg, all right, and now the last thing I need to do is get my right leg over the shoulder. So I switch from my right hip to my left hip, and swing my leg over the top, okay? Now that we're here, I just row back with my right hand, and we get the tap. What's the most common way people get out of this? Yeah. Yeah, Warren said it, sort of. <laughs> they drop their head out the back, okay? And this is a mistake you'll probably make at first when you start doing this. You get here and you go, how can I pull as hard into their neck as possible? And you go like that, and you open this big space because you're leaning back to, to get the space, okay? So like, I want to put as much pressure as possible, I'll lean back so I can get like my arm pretty much straight and that puts a lot of tension, but there's also a big gap. Instead of doing that, 
I keep my elbow close to my hip, and I'm going to keep that sort of I'm like keep my upper body forward and pull back with my arm. Yeah, that should be enough to get the choke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so get our harness. We're going to fall to the side. If you can, you can start fight, fighting the grips here. So at any point, you can start working the, the collar grip. So even if I get my collar grip here, I've still got to work him up. Come forward, chest pressure on the back of the shoulder. Knee goes high. We're going to grab the leg, sit to the other side, foot over the top, row, and finish. You probably notice each time I do it, I might change the order a little bit in terms of changing the grip or grabbing the leg, and that's the thing is that doesn't matter so much. It's important to keep pressure behind their back so they can't turn into you. Free your bottom leg, get it behind the head, sit back, and we'll finish the choke. Okay, three, two, one. Uh, similar action, but um, just to maintain the back now, it's really important. Uh, I think the most important skill once you get to the back is just being able to keep it. If you can hold it forever, eventually you'll submit them. Okay, so um, being able to maintain it when someone starts to escape. Very, two very common ways that uh, people will get out uh, is basically I come to the side and their hips will start getting past your, your bottom pull. Okay, so uh, there's an easy way and there's a hard way to recover. Um, um, so the easy way is actually if he goes the way he just went, which is the same way that we can set up our choke. So it's pretty much the same action, except we can just forget about the collar side of this at the moment. Just keep your harness. John starts to escape like this. I'm going to post my right foot on the mat. I try and keep my hook like attached to the far hip now instead of holding like a hook like you're on the back. Okay. If I keep this hook here, uh, I can turn into a half guard if John starts to, to face me. And he's got a chance here to move his hips away. Yeah, because I'm trapping his leg but not his hips. Whereas if I change this to hook the hip, when he tries to move his hip away, he's a bit more stuck. Okay? My bottom leg is going to retract so I can drive through it. Get him facing down, my chest in his shoulder, knee behind the head, sit to my right hip, left hip, and I've got the back, and now we're on the other side. Okay? So John's going to escape out that side. Same thing. Okay? Uh, actually, sorry. When it's this side, it's often. Because it's my underhook side, I'll get a bit more twisted. And it's often hard to reach for the far hip and get some drive with my left leg. So for this one, I actually will tend to keep somewhat of a hook. Keep your chest really tight against their back for this one. This is the harder one to do. My foot goes back. That's my driver, driver here. My head's going to go to the mat. And I drive him face down and I drop my knee behind my shoulder. I sit down on that hip. And I go to the other side. Okay. So he's gonna go. He's gonna go out this side now. I'm gonna hook, drive up. He goes high, and go to the other side. The thing I want you to focus on here, guys, is like turn them as well. So watch me turn John. He gets out. I put my head to the mat and I turn him face down. Like that. That means you're driving into him with your back leg. As long as you've got a good harness, you should be able to maintain the back. Let's just go two minutes each on that. We'll go over an escape and then we'll do some uh, specific training and rolling. Three, two, one.